Photographic Composition, Lecture 5, The Dark, Digital Darkroom, Part 1. Most of the photographs that we've been discussing up to this point have been unmanipulated. That is to say that film was exposed to a scene and then processed with the intention of making prints from it that as faithfully represented the scene as possible. Man Ray um, was an artist who didn't feel that kind of constraint and often manipulated his imagery um, and also often did it very simply. In this case, he took um, one photograph of the back of a, uh, a woman and um, exposed that to um, photographic paper. Before processing it, though, he then exposed it a second time to an image of the F-holes um, in a violin uh, with the intention of playing up the similarities between the female form and, and the violin. From the very earliest days, um, there was a fair amount of manipulation required uh, based on the processes that were available, the, the film and the processes that were available to photographers. Um, in this instance, um, a, a, an ocean scene by Gustave Le Gray, um, the uh, sky would have normally turned um, almost white because the early emulsions were very blue sensitive and um, skies would often turn out absolutely white or very, very pale without any detail. And uh, it was important to him in this particular image to show detail not only in the ocean, but also in the sky. This required um, manipulation of the print um, in the darkroom. Here we have, um, and unless you choose to believe that this is in fact a photograph of a two-headed man, um, an early example of, of deliberate manipulation. Um, it's clear that uh, uh, the first image was taken with the man tilting his head either to the left or the right, and then um, it was exposed a second time after he had tilted it to the, the opposite side, uh, thus giving us this kind of crude notion of a, uh, of a two-headed person. There were photographers who specialized in allegorical scenes and also ones that tended to be rather complex. Henry Peach Robinson uh, was well known for this and um, most of his images required at least three, four, five and more um, uh, original negatives um, which were then in a relatively laborious process um, brought together in a composite. This is a typical scene. Very likely the woman on the left was photographed separate from the women on the, the right, and the man at the window was probably yet another exposure. Um, the sky might have been um, a separate exposure as well, um, all in support of this uh, notion of a, 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 an unreal reality. Um, Eugene Ache, um, we've, we've discussed Ache quite a bit, um, tried to anyone's knowledge only once um, achieve a, uh, a, a double exposure here. Um, the intention um, was to give detail to the sky, um, but it apparently didn't really, uh, it wasn't something that Ache ultimately ended up believing in because this is the only um, one of its kind that, that anyone knows of. And um, as you can see, it's extremely crude. It's obvious uh, where the manipulation has taken place and um, it doesn't reveal anything um, meaningful or useful um, in the process. This was a, uh, very much like the, uh, the daguerreotype of the, the gentleman who had um, moved his head from the left to the right to give the illusion of a two-headed man. Here, the photographer Maurice Gibert um, had uh, Ari um, Toulouse-Lautrec pose twice and um, then took the two images um, and melded them together in this one uh, relatively convincing um, scene. F. Hollanday was a, also, a, for lack of a better term, an allegorical photographer. 
who um, often combined images. Um, here we see a sort of idyllic uh, woodland scene with a um, very large head seeming to come out of the, uh, the, the side of the hill um, as if it were a natural form. And um, there's a lot of satire um, in, in photography um, involving primarily, or often uh, involving scale. In this case, um, we have a um, huge, um, I believe it's a, uh, well, th these are European soldiers, and the one who is, uh, there's one figure who's dominating um, the other three, partly because he's twice as big as anyone else. And um, again, this is relatively convincingly done, aside from the fact that it obviously could not happen. Um, Man Ray again. Um, as I mentioned before, he manipulated a lot of his images. In this case, there's actually not a lot of manipulation. Um, in essence, what he has done is to um, make a positive and a negative um, uh, print from the same image and flipped the, um, the negative to place the, uh, the mask on opposite sides and then mounted these two together. Um, this is a process called solarization that Man Ray also um, engaged in to some degree. In, uh, in solarization, either the film or the print, um, when processed, are exposed to light briefly. And um, in, in the process, darks um, can go um, white or, or bright. Um, it's kind of unpredictable. And um, I think that's part of what uh, Man Ray actually enjoyed about the process, because he wasn't always sure what he was going to get, but he felt it was always going to be something interesting and worth engaging in. Um, this is a photogram, also by Man Ray. And um, we can see it's two profiles, apparently kissing, and hands, and some other um, uh, objects have been photographed, maybe a pillow. It, it's hard to tell exactly what it is that we're looking at. And um, that's not the point. Um, this is all about manipulation and very deliberate manipulation. William Mortensen was a, also an allegorical photographer, um, an American in the uh, working primarily in the 20s and 30s, and um, worked out a process that resembled um, drawing uh, quite accurately. Um, in service of these um, biblical and, and um, other historical references, um, many of them gory as, as this is. Um, this is also fairly typical of the work that he did, in which um, a number of images were brought together um, and altered one way or another. Um, here uh, we see a picture of uh, William Randolph Hearst, who was um, uh, largely reviled, especially among artists, um, as a somebody who had too much power in the press, um, since he owned a lot of it in, in um, the US. And uh, here he's depicted as a, an octopus. Um, Barbara Morgan also uh, was interested in manipulation, and um, but she had also photographed a lot of dancers. And so here you have an image of dancer, uh, kind of faintly seen in the dark section of this, with flowers um, seen in silhouette, and um, scenes of um, more than likely Central Park um, seen in snow. John Hartfeld was a German photographer um, who was not shy about. Uh, making political statements with his work, and um, made a whole series of, of photographs um, basically denouncing um, Nazism and uh, Adolf Hitler in, in particular. This is another of um, Hartfeld's uh, political satires. Ouija, who was also known as the famous, um, whose name was uh, actually was Arthur Fellig, 
um, aside from being a news photographer in, in New York primarily, um, also engaged in a fair amount of uh, uh, darkroom trickery. In this case, he'd, he'd taken a picture of um, Betty Davis and um, played with it until he ended up with uh, her having four eyes instead of two. And Marilyn Monroe was uh, also subjected to some of his trickery. In this case, um, it's my guess that uh, perhaps he um, projected the um, the negative through a distorting um, uh, lens or um, some other device in order to give the very peculiar looking um, image on the right instead of the original on the left. Philip Halsman um, was a photographer who uh, specialized primarily in portraiture. Um, he collaborated with um, Salvador Dali um, uh, many times and this is one of his best known uh, collaborations in which uh, there is apparently um, no uh, darkroom trickery um, or at least very little. Um, all of what you see in the frame was actually uh, either suspended from the ceiling or in the case of the cats in the water thrown through the air and because um, he was photographing with strobes um, action was uh, stopped in, in midair and um, everything is clear. Um, this print actually shows more information than um, would end up in the final um, print, but this is actually more interesting. I think we see that the chair is actually just being held by a, an assistant and you can see um, above the, uh, uh, the easels and the pictures that there are wires suspending um, the uh, the easels and um, the cats are on their own though they were actually thrown and wet at the time 